in the mornings we've been out walking, we haven't even had to uh, worry about the heat, wearing a sweater even in the morning, it feels so good. We're so excited about fall, we're planning a little trip back to Tennessee late October just to go back to Michael's hometown, we haven't been there since his mom died. And it's so beautiful there in the fall, you know, with all the leaves, because his parents built a house in the woods, so it's like a tree house where there's trees all around us. We can't wait to go back. And we have such fond memories of Michael's mother. She was so cute. Little thing, just cute little thing. But she was very strong. And uh, I'll never forget one of the first times she met me, one of the first times we went there. As soon as we got there, she said, well, are you going to come to church with us on Sunday? <laughs> And we said, well, I don't know, you know, we just got here, we have to think about it. And she kept asking, you know, every couple hours, why are you going to go to church with us? And we finally got it, that she was going to keep asking until she got the correct answer. <laughs> and so we said, yes, we'll go to church with you on Sunday. And of course, this uh, Methodist church that the family had been going to since they lived there, they grew up there, they lived there all their lives, was over 100 years old. And his mother was almost 90, and she'd been going there all her life. Can you imagine the same church all her life? And if you know Methodist churches, they're very structured. Everything's about structure. And the building itself was sort of up, raised up a little bit on a hill, and you had to climb steps to get up there, and a strong brick building and columns on it. You knew you were going into a church when you went up into that building. But we were committed to doing it joyously. And so we got into the whole mood changed when we entered the inside because we felt all this warmth of all these people who knew each other, all these people who were friends, and they were so welcoming to see us there. So we made a commitment beforehand that we were going to, you know, when they sang, even though the theology we didn't quite go along with, we were going to sing with gusto. So we were really lucky that day. There was a visiting gospel choir. And oh, we were so lucky. Uh, but before they let the gospel choir sing, the traditional leader of the choir there had to do the opening songs, you know. And i never forget the first song they picked out was leaning on the everlasting arms, you know? And Michael and I, we sang it with gusto. And our favorite part was when the men got to the point where all the men went, leaning, leaning. You know? And we, Michael went, leaning, leaning, right along with them. It was great. But then, the visiting gospel pianist got up with the gospel choir. And she took that Methodist hymnal she set it aside, and she started playing that piano with freedom. It was wonderful. Just such freedom as gospel music. That's what gospel is, putting music to freedom. I'll never forget one of our favorite instructors at Unity Village was a Methodist minister, Terry New Thought, and he has a bunch of CDs called The History of Gospel and Jazz, and he has a great sense of humor, and he's just an amazing teacher. And he grew up Methodist, so he used to say about the Methodist hymnal and the, the music, you always knew where the next note was going. Because it was so structured, you knew exactly what the ne next note was that was going to be played. Well, not so when the gospel pianist got up there. She was playing that piano, and you just didn't know where it was going to go. She didn't even know where it was going to go next. You never follow the sheet music, you just let spirit take you on a joyful gospel journey of freedom. At one point, Michael's mother looked at us and said, that's not usually how we play this song. <laughs> and to add to that, when the minister got up to preach, the whole gospel choir would be doing things like, amen, brother, we're right with you, brother. You know, call and response. So there was all the freedom in that. And I could tell a lot of the people weren't quite used to that freedom. <laughs> And as it was going on, it dawned on me what was happening in this church of such structure. The structure was suddenly breaking down. And some people loved it, and other people didn't know quite how to handle that their rigid structure was suddenly breaking down. And I compare that to what's happening in the world today, especially on this anniversary of 9-11. The world as we know it is passing away. All over the world, structures are breaking up. Even in Centerville, Tennessee, structures are going down. The third dimension 
is morphing into a higher spiritual plane. And we say we want that. We say we want awakening consciousness on the planet. But what we forget then is, oh, that means we have to let go of what is keeping this dimension in its structure. We have to be willing to allow that change to come in. I mean, just look at the world. Governments are certainly no longer working very well. You can tell by the election, whichever way you're at, right? <laughs> just isn't working anymore. The banking industry, greed and corruption, the medical field, oh, don't get me started, I get on my soapbox with the med. You don't even want to get me started on the medical field, where some people can't afford medical care and other people are okay with that. You know, don't get me started, I'll stop. The school systems, where we have all these young children now with ADHD and special needs, and they're saying, you can't teach me in the same way you've always been teaching everyone else. That doesn't work anymore. And all the old structures are having to adjust to that. And there's all the upheavals as we watch that change. It looks like chaos. Remember last week when I talked about divine order? and how divine order can look like chaos, because we say we want that, but then it's like rearranging a room. In order to get that, you have to change all this, and all the way to that, it looks like chaos. Ascension up to a higher consciousness is letting go of the structure that's holding us, holding me in my structure. What's holding you? Is it a forgiveness issue? Is it your self-worth? Is it all the programming you grew up with? All that has to pass away so the new higher thought can take over. And that can cause anxiety, fear, anger. How do you handle all that? With what was that? <laughs> I didn't hear that, Bob. <laughs> little call and response from the audience. <laughs> well, the first thing is don't give power to the chaos. Don't give power to it. Don't name it, talk about it. Just don't give it any power. Don't feed it. Allow what needs to unravel to unravel. If you're comfortable, repeat with me. I forgive, I let go, I allow it to unravel. Together, I forgive, I let go, I allow it to unravel. How do you feel when you say that? Does that feel comfortable or is it a little, ooh, I don't want to go through that. I know how it feels. And then we have to not, as it's unraveling, and we feel these feelings, we have to not project them on everyone around us. It's our stuff that's coming undone. And so we simply allow the emotions to pass through. Yes, I'm feeling afraid right now. I'm just going to allow that to pass through. Yes, I'm a little angry right now. I'm going to allow that to pass through. Trusting God and trusting that evolution of consciousness that is going on. There's an author by the name of Steve Taylor who had sort of a definition for this flow of evolving change. He said, there's an underlying current that is continually guiding you toward the effortless fulfillment of your heart's desires. So in other words, when we say we want this, we want the awakening, we want love's presence, then that current is going to stir up everything that is keeping us from it. And we constantly have, okay, I forgive, I let go, I allow it to unravel. You know, if I, uh, if I wasn't in unity, I would be a Taoist. I started reading the Tao Te Ching again last week. And it's so wonderful. It's all about emptying yourself, going with the flow. I just love the Taoist philosophy. It talks about this empty state. When we shake clay into a pot, it's the emptiness inside that holds whatever we want. It's not about the clay. It's not about the container. It's the emptiness. When we hammer wood for a house, it, it is the inner space that makes it livable. Not the structure, but the inner space. And the Tao is constantly about letting go and being with what is, going with the flow. 
Repeat with me. I forgive, I let go, I allow it to unravel together. I forgive, I let go, I allow it to unravel. I love the river song we sing today because, you know, the river just flows along. It doesn't matter if there's obstacles, rocks, debris, the river just keeps flowing along, allowing the current to carry it along. And in our lives, when unpleasant situations happen. We too have to be like the river. doesn't mean you give up. It doesn't mean you don't do anything. But you allow the Spirit's prompting and then go with the flow of that. I forgive. I let go. I allow it to unravel. Stephen Taylor went on to say, sometimes a particular challenge you face in life is part of the flow because it's a desire of your heart to experience that challenge so it will lead you to where you need to be. We don't wake up at one morning and say, okay, God, I want a challenge today. I want something really hard to deal with today. We don't do that. But we say, oh, God, I want to get to Z, from A to Z. I want to awaken. Well, what we don't realize then is we have to walk through A, B, C, D, E, all the way to Z. We can't just be there. We have to walk through whatever is keeping us in whatever state, far away from our goal, we release everything that is not of love. And challenges come up on this earth plane of duality. Mostly challenges to heal our own pain body. Stuff that we don't even remember anymore we're holding on to. And the challenges provide an opportunity to heal, an opportunity to forgive, an opportunity to let go. They point the way. This is pointing the way to the next piece of the puzzle. And some of those wounds have been buried so long we don't even know where they came from. They can be physical ailments. They can be people pushing your buttons. Anybody get your buttons pushed this week? I know I push a few sometimes. Have you had any struggle or heartache this week? Pointing to old wounds, old wounds. I forgive together. I forgive, I let go, I allow it to unravel. You know, Michael and I like movies, and we rented from Netflix an old, old movie called Where the Wild Things Are. Has anybody ever seen it? It's a children's movie, but we were a couple of kids. We love children's movies sometimes. And so this little boy, who has a mother who's a single mom, she's working so hard she hardly has time for him because she's really trying to provide for her children. So she doesn't have enough time for him. And his older sister certainly doesn't want her little brother hanging out with her all the time. And his dad has either left or died, I can't remember which has gone on. He's very angry and he's very lonely and there's nobody to play with. And finally one day he just blows and he runs away. He runs away to this magical land in his mind, a magical place. And there's all that, so it's an island of all like teddy bears, all these wonderful big teddy bears. And at first they, they're like his wild things. You know? And at first it's so much fun, they're playing and you know, yelling out loud and running around in the forest. But then pretty soon they start to get on each other's nerves. They start to feel frazzled. And they start to fuss and fight. And at one point in the movie, one of the characters says, families are hard. <laughs> families are hard. Relationships are not easy. And at the end of the movie, you realize that all those teddy bears, all those characters, were simply an aspect of his own soul, his own self. You can't run away from yourself, can you? Wherever I go, there I am. You know, I carry all that stuff with me. My fears, my emotions, they all go with me and keep being reflected back to me. Can't run or point fingers. But those challenges purposely lead us to every situation that will help our soul growth, heal us and strengthen us, to shake us out of our routines. Oh, don't you get stuck in a routine where your life is one routine after another? And we need to break out of that structure bit by bit to free ourselves to feel alive again. Release those limiting beliefs about ourselves. Repeat once again, I forgive, I let go, 
I allow it to unravel. The third dimension is unraveling. The world as we know it is passing away. Let it. Let it go. And find the blessing in the chaos. I always go back to Romans 8. God can turn all things to good. Even my chaos, God can turn it to good. And I hold on to that. Trusting the flow, trusting those inner promptings of spirit, what to do in every moment, what not to do. Trusting the flow. Tapping into that spiritual power rather than my human power, my ego power. Allowing the flow to take me from A to Z, over the bumps, over the rocks. There's another children's story in our Bible, David and Goliath. Doesn't every children love, child love that story? Of the little boy and the big giant, and the little boy has to come up against the big giant, and all the other uh, people that are fighting the giant have armor on, and he comes up with nothing but a slingshot and a stone. What a beautiful metaphysical story that one is, too. For that little boy is divine love individualized in each of us. And we all come up against these big, giant challenges with nothing but a slingshot nor stone. But that, that stone is a stone of truth that we throw at the head, that we give to our mind. I'm going to speak the truth not my fear. I'm going to speak the truth, not my anger. I'm going to speak the truth that changes my mind, lifts my consciousness, and frees me from this limiting structure that I've held myself in. What big challenges are you facing this week? What are the wild things in your head? I know what's in mine. What are the ones in your head? Who are the people and what are the situations that are mirroring? Something you need to look at to get from A to Z. Repeat with me one last time. I forgive, I let go, I allow it to unravel. One more time. I forgive, I let go, I allow it to unravel. And then let's just sit with that feeling for a bit. Once we've completely surrendered, completely let it all go. We come back to pour yourself in me, O Holy Spirit. Fill me with the light, the love. Fill me with your love so that I might see the world with new eyes, so that I might live in the freedom of your grace, so I might dance with joy. And we just allow that feeling to take us through the day today, out into the week, the months ahead, and we extend that love to all those we meet with forgiveness, with a spirit of letting go, allowing it all to unravel so that the higher life can come forth. We say thank you, Father, Mother, God, in the nature of the Christ, and so it is. Amen. Finding my way from the inside out Somehow tears pull me through They release me to the dark night I let go to the starlight And the shadows 